Hello, uh, my name is Samuel Abelo, and today I'm live to talk about the female-oriented personality according to the psychology of Carl Jung, as his experience led him to discover, and um, I just mean that the terms come from him, but my, um, my knowledge comes from experience of my own psyche, of my sisters, as well as a community of Jungians and psycho other types of psychologists and psychiatrists who have spoken to, as well as extensive reading. I think that an important book towards my work would be Goddesses in Every Woman by Jean Shannon Bolin. And that Goddesses in Every Woman book is very important, and it's definitely read in conjunction to um, Carl Jung's volume 9.1 in the Collected Works, that's volume 9.1, and Eric Neumann's Origins and History of Consciousness. Now, the latter two books are quite dangerous to um, a personality in, it, it, who is not familiar with any sort of psychology, uh, you know, Erickson, um, Winnicott, um, some, of, some of these more basic levels of understanding and even if one is in analysis this material is uh, quite dangerous and just that the 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 depth and, and intensity of the imagery and and the uh, the delving into world cultures tends to create what's called identification and this is a major problem with reading uh, Boland's work is that the goddesses book promotes identi what's called identification with one of these goddesses and that um, a woman may feel that she relates so much to um, a certain goddess or another that, that she'll just live that out. And the book, Live It Out, I mean that, that a fascination occurs and, and a, a poetic sort of feeling about life. And all of this is, is very dangerous. So part of what I'm trying to do here is is create a map that has an ethic to it. And, and through uh, what I've seen and what the world is like and history and, and all of these books combined to create a map in which um, one who is female identified can orient themselves in, in relationship to the depths, to potential, uh, potential forwards into life from the uh, origins of their, of their consciousness, what they're given, the predisposed, um, talking about predispositions uh, within the psychology, which are essentially related to biology and structures of the brain, um, as well as basically what we'd call cultural um, cultural structures, inherited cultural structures, which are now scientifically spoken about in terms of epigenetics, but in Jung's terms are archetypal structures connected to um, to ancient mythologies, ancient rites or passages of initiation, and um, certainly as we develop culturally, new ideas are generated and, and the women's roles and women's um, stories and narratives uh, blossom and grow. And I think that that's a major theme here that I want to point out is that the woman's psyche, as much as it could be conceptualized as I've drawn here, as a circle with the cross as the ultimate uh, fourfold integration, which is just a way of saying a manyfold integration. It could all be, also be represented as a flowering, um, a bud that grows into increasing complexity and more directions and, and the directions representing experiences that the woman has had and, and attributes or qualities of her personality. In other words, places that she's gone in herself or in her experience and her life that um, have brought her to to the fullness of herself. And that self is, is larger, but is theoretically, you know, um, infinite. It, its potential is very, very large. And so this, this uh, dahlia flower that I drew in 2015 or so, 2014, is a great example of the potential of the personality and the individual um, growth. And so also along the lines of my introduction here, I wanna say that psychoanalytic theory can be challenging, uh, challenging to the ear, challenging to the mind. Um, and all of this is meant to build or 
enhanced consciousness, meaning understanding and comprehension, self-awareness. Jung insists that in his work and, and in my experience, I've seen that, that consciousness or growth, personality growth and development cannot uh, occur without, without a looking into what is not known or what is uncomfortable, what he calls what is unconscious. And what is unconscious can be difficult to look at. And so today I'm going to walk through this, this map as the primary uh, model here. And there's also another uh, mnemonic which I've, I've developed, which is related to color. And it's a coloristic uh, representation of, of psychology, um, mostly connecting Eric Norman's origins theory to the, to the development of the personality in, in, and the expressions there within of the gods and goddesses. And um, that is basically a color chart that goes from the lowest po stages being polarity, um, which people know as sort of the borderline state in Kleinian theory of, of the good and bad, and that oscillation between all bad and all good. Neumann talks about the, the, the mother, the, the maternal level uh, containing the, the father and mother image as, as positive and negative both. And that oscillation leads to uh, further stages of development, which I'm representing by the gray, areas of gray uh, and brown, and levels into color. And these colors are, I'll get more into this, represent the, the basic archetypal structures of the, of the psyche, of the psychology of the woman, um, according to sort of typologies. And these typologies are meant to be um, integrated in the sense that understood what the predisposition of the individual is and working towards a, a, an incorporation of, of more individuality, more free will, choice, and, and um, direction in one's life. So all of that being said as an introduction, um, I, I'm now going to just talk about the, the depth of the psyche as, as a beginning. So we can think about this depth as a, as a flower beginning its bloom in, amidst the, the oceanic um, levels here. And the female personality begins, as does the male, within this ouroboric level. This is the snake eating its own tail. And so I want to say from the beginning here is that I do have Jewish followers and I, I will try to make this as, as kosher as possible. But when we're talking about um, the, the maternal levels of the psyche, we're going back into the deep depths of, of pre-Torah um, culture and, and pre-Torah existence in that this is, this is marked by the need for integration. And integration, as I've said, according to Jung's theory and according to my experience, necessitates a regression. Now, the regression should be taken with immense responsibility, and that's because of the dangers involved with, with accessing this material. Now, I'm going to try to mitigate that, that um, danger by speaking in basic and simple concepts which we all have some awareness of in our contemporary culture. And by use of, of drawings and paintings from my own oeuvre, and works that, that convey the, the, the different qualities and, or, or, or expressions of that, that we've all seen to some degree or another, whether it's on Instagram and movies and film and um, in our personal relationships. And so the, the, uh, the mother and father imago is where I'm starting on this polarity level, right? And that... That level of consciousness is quite readily known throughout psychoanalytic psycho, psycho, psychology and psychoanalytic theory, especially when we get into Klein and objects relations and this type of type of work. And according to Jungian theory, this is connected to the ouroboric level. It it's a snake 
rounding around. It's it's the maternal serpent which draws one back into consciousness only to bring come up for brief amounts of time and back down. And so this is what I'm describing here in the chart when you look down at the bottom and you see depth in psyche and the father and mother imago, that this this area of consciousness is is marked by this sort of um, difficulty with with um, relating to oneself in a positive manner and and in a consistent manner, positive or negative, as well as the the outer world and, and responsibilities. And one great way to think about this is to start with the um, I'm going to start with the the female oriented psychology and its relationship to its relationship to the masculine to the paternal side and then I will get more to the the maternal side so the the positive father is basically stands for culture and spirituality and a, an intact or, or comprehensive spirituality or culture that can contain the woman and, and facilitate her life process. And that's very rarely happens today because of the failure of Protestantism in the West and in um, just sort of broader pop culture as a, a failure towards women. And that that hurt, by the way, and that what I've seen is, is a large part of my motivation in this work. But that being said, the, the, the positive father has that attribute, and the negative father is basically a, 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 a constant judgment within the woman that, that she's never fully approving of her own life. And the, what we see in the phenomenology is when a woman goes who a contemporary woman in this sort of reality goes into herself, she discovers, and if she watches her own thought, that there are a multitude of attacking um, judges within her. And these judges are usually ir irrational in the sense that they're, because they're existing on the primordial structures of the psyche. They, um, Jung speaks about a client who dreamt of, of these evil monkeys. And I drew this as the in innocent, young soul woman, the, the, in, the woman who's embarking on this quest, encountering um, this, this attacking animus, we call it, the animus being the, the, the early, it representing the male soul within the woman, the, the contrasexual element of the psyche, the opposite within her, the opposite of her female ego being a, an animus, a, a contrasexual element. And this attacking monkey is a is an early form of the animus it's at a primordial level so here is the seeker encountering the attacking um animus and she has her eyes closed as if to say as if to say please you know keep away these 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 attacking moods these self nodding ideas, um, these self doubts, um, and, and she's seeking maybe for an answer. And there's a vitality in her, uh, despite the, the, um, the evilness of these monkeys and each monkey has a different quality. This one's, you know, calling out and is truly evil. This one is just sort of walking around her, you know, maybe constantly this uneasy feeling that she has. This one's above her, indicating that there's a progression possible towards upper places, that maybe he's trying to reach out and actually talk to her and relate to her in some manage and in, in some capacity. And, and that's really what the process here is all about, is furthering that relationship to the inner masculine and also to the, the, the maternal self. Um, I would just, before I, I continue on, I want to just point out that, the, that the, the female psyche, according to the theory, is, is similar to the male psyche in that the, the, because the soul is and the unconscious is feminine in both genders or in all genders, the, the, the woman's ultimate... Um, realization is through the masculine back to the feminine. 
Um, and, and, and the male, which personality, which I've lectured on yesterday, reaches to the fe feminine contrasexual soul to get to the, the maternal, um, integrated and, and extraordinary nourishing maternal as a heavenly force. And that, that as the unconscious, as a, as a, as a process and, and place in oneself. So that there's this, this slight nuance here is that the, the male, the male aspect is, is, remains very secondary within the female psyche, um, integrated or, or common, uh, the, how it's most commonly integrated. And so I'm going to continue on with this, with this, uh, theme of the, the animus and, um, how that relates to the father archetype and, and how that helps a woman get to her transformative side and to her soul and breaking through this, this shadow to help her, her ego grow and connect to this larger self that I've described, which is like a mother in heaven. It's a heavenly mother. So that the beginnings and the ends, the origins of the of the lower of the lower serpent become a a wholeness in heaven and you can see the similarity in these types of so the beginning and the end are the same symbol and these types of ideas i'm trying to point out at the beginning just to get a sense of orientation that that the that the that the feminine is actually the primary element in all psychologies it's just that the the dynamic force or the force that causes transformation and growth is always the contrasexual element because it's it's placed against the ego into the unconscious. It becomes the vehicle towards, it has a lot of dynamis and energy to it. But the primary factor in psyche is the feminine, which is why, by the way, and I'll just remark on this, in Judaism and in Torah, we don't speak so openly and 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 brazenly of of the so-called goddess or the feminine because it's out of immense respect so know that all of this is coming from an immense amount of respect and and true true love and, and appreciation when i speak about female psychology and and the and the goddess and the maternal psyche and that this is an attempt to, to in a safe and, and managed way, uh, appreciate and express these, these qualities. So, again, the animus is the way to, to, to start differentiating and helping the, the female ego have a sense of its own autonomy and, and, and ability to sustain itself. And so, early on, the, again, the, the feminine psyche will experience the male ego as an attacker or a multitude of anonymous individuals. And I think that this drawing really communicates that as you see these um, primitive sort of representations, as if the female psyche um, experiences this anonymous multitude as, as without relatedness, it's it's fractured and and it's the eyes are dark or and that all is just symbology for the the um for the lack of relatedness that's capable there and that the the and what this means practically is that the thoughts of the the female psychology and the moods uh inundate and and come on suddenly and are opposing one another at different times at once um, you know, self-celebratory and enthusiastic and, and inspired, and then at another time, self-deprecating and, and sorrowful, and other times stimulated towards acting out. Uh, the animus drives her to act out um, in, in romantic episodes, or then to, then to act out a, a breakup that wasn't meant to be. These are the animus uh, moods and the animus moods can also come through in the mistaken utterance the saying the thing that I didn't mean to say that she didn't mean to say that came through her animus words and you can see that here these these multitude of men's have their mouth open 
the animus is very much associated with speech as the male archetype, the, the masculine archetype, sorry, the masculine archetype is associated with the word. So in her unconscious is, is the word. How can she get to her discovery of ideas and an orientation of what life is and, and the meaning of life and her, her role in the world is finding the words. And so these, this early stage, it's very black and white and, and difficult is, is an indication of the immense potential of her, of her word. And here we have another representation of this, of this attacking animus. And he is of the lower spheres in that, he, you know, he's almost ghost-like, but she's starting to reach out and to relate to him. And so what does that mean for the woman to relate to her animus? I think that that's uh, a very important um, thing to get to here, right? And I know I've, I've been emphasizing this, this animus here because it's a lot to take in. It's, it's a struggle uh, to grasp. And this beginnings of relatedness um, really incline the, the woman to steer away from this attacking multitude and the attraction to ideology, ideological possession, which stirs her animus because the animus is the word and the idea that, the, that because the ideas and the ideology of the outer world are, so, are actually felt to be numinous to her, or in other words, it, it attract immense psychic power, i.e. libido in, in Jung's terms, just immense attractive power, the ideas and the ideology, even the, the, the law itself, the, 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 the law in terms of American you know, uh, justice system or this type of thing. And I know this may be, may be odd to hear and, and difficult to listen to, but this is seen throughout the phenomenology in Jung's and, and a great psychologist, uh, Mary Louise von Franz, talks about this very, very well in her books um, on alchemy, introduction to alchemy, as well as the puer eternus, that to get away from this, this numinous sense of the ideology that, that's a word that comes of rhetoric, that possesses her to to act into the outer world in in ways that aren't serving her soul. That to get away from this, to quite consciously read in the theory and say, okay, I need to get away from this, means finding a way to relate to one's own soul, to one's own soul. So you can see that I put in opposition the animus and the soul. And trying to get away from this depth of the psyche, the, the negative father who, who stimulates the, the, the animus complexes, uh, the multitude. And to get away from that and, and, and move towards the soul much more open and will feed the ego's growth in order to return to this masculine side. So what does that soul look like? Um, for me, I, th I think of first, I think of early forms of relatedness such as the dance. And throughout history and throughout culture and into our modern times, the woman's dance has been a way to communicate, um, to, to dance in terms of play of conversation, also a metaphor, to have a conversation with someone is a type of dance. Where, where is he at? What is he thinking here? Um, what am I feeling in reaction to what he said? And, and what do I want to say in response? And wow, I felt very powerful when when I opened up about this aspect of my life or my, my interest in, in um, whatever it may be, a certain film or movie or idea, or, or if, if you're religious, a, pas a passage in scripture that's calling to you at a certain time, that these, this, this dance of communication is, is the real way to begin relatedness. And so I mentioned the dance as, as a literal phenomenon, you know, the... I, when, when I was young, I grew up reform and we would go to bat mitzvahs and we would dance with one another. And, you know, at first it's very awkward and, and difficult. And soon you learn to relate and, and what this means to have communication going. So I call this this related feminine Nora and I, I drew her here as awakening and, and bringing up energy and finding her way to, to, to communicate even on, uh, if on a 
sort of primordial level, like ancient cultures, she she is she is overwhelming still of the goddess in a way of impersonal, we would say in psychology, um, maybe, but she has energy coming through her and she's looking up, she's starting to speak maybe. And here I have an image of, of Nora speaking, you know, coming close to the male personality as an other um, and maybe she's afraid and maybe she knows that there's depth of, within her that he may not be able to see. And maybe he only has one eye, <laughs> so to speak. But still they, they are able to speak. Behind her is a multitude. Behind her is, of course, a multitude. Behind him is all of his, his energy, his, 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 his energy that, that brings him to, towards her. Um, but but they're beginning to speak, and what that means on an intrapsychic level is that is that ideas are might begin to formulate the coherent ideas that are healthy for her that make her feel integrated in her life. That she has a path. That she has a maybe she has a friend or a companion or a, or, or begins a relationship that is a husband. She dates to to become related and. She has a sense of what she values in the world. And, and these ideas can be represented in these platonic forms. That her interest in structure, that the because of the... I'll come back to this structure image, but because, <clears throat> because the woman's... I consciously identified with her feminine side, the masculine side, again, is in the unconscious and creates... An immense dynamism. It gives. It is the active force within her psyche, the power, uh, the dynamic, and so that, um, generally speaking, women's f uh, femininity is balanced and and actually energized and stimulated by structure, by um, schedule, uh, and and it's not necessarily always schedule, but just that the sense that there is a rock or a foundation. A, a holding structure is very healthy for a woman. As I mentioned earlier in my essay, this has been a failure of culture and society. Largely speaking, I'm, I'm speaking about the West here. Um, and this failure has led to a, a, a large and broad experience of the negative father. And this negative father and negative mother as well, that the sense that, that the mother is not a refuge either, this negative maternal experience of the origins um, is is a great an adaptation which Jung, Jung points out and which is, is common these days is an adaptation of resilient reaction to this is to befriend the the the, the man to to take on a bit of the animus into her personality so to speak to take on the idea generator, the, the, the psychologist, the writer, has these historical uh, machismo things like Hemingway, the, the heroic sort of attitude. And we um, talk about Athena. Um, we talk about Athena in Boland's work and, and this, this ability to, to befriend the man as, an, as a way to overcome the negative, the negative mother who, who is no refuge, that she finds no refuge in the world, that she becomes a, a companion to her husband or to, right, that they are both talking about ideas and psychology. And I, I think that this, this image, this portrait here, it gives a great sense of this, this woman who, who's utilizing her, her ego and in relation to the intellectual, the, the animus intellectual, to overcome arbitrary, arbitrary ideological possession and attacking multitudes of chaos and, and really solidify her own almost heroic, Athena-like and heroic-like um, appreciation. But it's different. I say almost heroic because it's different than the man's heroicism. There's a sensitivity there. And, and it's usually marked by a close relationship with with a professor or a husband as to where they're, they're discussing and looking at culture and discussing their mother and father to break through these levels of 
polarity, black and white, into levels of nuance and, and understanding their needs, their basic needs, and also aspects of their of personality that they see in the world. And, and really having a positive judge. I think of this woman as having a positive judge towards the world, that the, that the primitive levels of attacking, of attacking Animus, you know, that are unable to be met, um, are, are now brought, you know, this, this, this speech that is hurtful and inner speech or out, outward speech, realizing, why did I say that? I really offended this person or turned him off or pushed him away, right? Um, that that is overcome by a by reading by conversation to generate this very sensitive but but judging individual this this woman whose ideas are being formulated and structured and and that's a beautiful beautiful process and in, in a sense what she's doing is she's building an inner home a place where her 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 soul. Her, her animus can function and live, but also that she can begin to develop in towards this, this greater self, okay? This greater self. That's what the inner home is beginning to, to, to come across there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to this positive animus, so to speak, and just mention a little bit about the terrible or overbearing mother as well as the terrible devouring mother, Okay, so that's in other cases, the negative maternal element, which contains the father, the, the lacking culture and spirituality, as well as the mother, this, this refuge for, for meaning and for, for mystery that isn't met for her, that this terrible sense of, of can, can be manifest in terms of overbearing and over controlling mothers who limit their daughter. This is expressed in the myth of Persephone, who I painted, who wants to go into the mystery. She wants to go into the depths, but her, her mother's sort of grim and, and, and uh, not allowing it. So you can, look at, you can look at the Persephone myth, and there's a book by Eric Neumann called Psyche and Amor, which amplifies this, and there's much Jungian material on the Persephone myth, and on my website, samuelabelo.com, if you Google Samuel Abelo and look up Persephone, there's a various articles on this phenomen phenomenon of the overbearing, over-controlling mother who sets arbitrary limits from her own animus onto the girl that she feels no autonomy. And that's a deep struggle because the autonomy is a way towards, even if, if, it, it, if it's not externalized in an intrapsychic sense, the girl feels that, that she has no ability or no freedom to communicate with her own inner ideas, her own animus, so to speak. Her ideas are stunted. The structures are felt to be broken or not, not there. And her inner home is, is filled with attacking animus. This is very common psychology that many women may, may relate to who are watching, right? And so this this terrible overbearing mother is a major, major theme in the world as, as fathers lack to either, either not present or even if they are present, not giving spiritual guidance to the, to the wife, to the mother, that she takes on the animus and becomes overbearing, unfortunately. Now, the other side is the terrible devouring mother, which can be, again, associated with the, the, the serpent or the dragon but also the, 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 the spider that consumes her own children, that creates a web that they can't get out of and is, in a sense, killing them. And this is a major, major theme in psychology that's known in psychoanalytic theory. And as, un, as, as sort of ugly as it is, it's, it's known throughout all time as well. And if you go to the Met, there are images similar to this theme that you'll find in, in the Polynesian section I remember I came across a, a, a devouring uh, figure and I said, that's exactly what I had painted. And so this is stark imagery here. I'm just gonna show the face of the terrible devouring mother. She is intense in the sense that she's actually bloody. You know, she, she takes the blood of your life, the fruit and vitality of life and, and, and consumes it. Um, in this, in the sense, what this means practically is that there are the 
the self nodding moods that I described earlier, the moods that, that, uh, that, that stunt growth or, or, or autonomy of the individual that overwhelm an individual with ridicule or upsetting remarks, uh, or, or just frankly, uh, wild and intense moods that, that, um, make the, the girl or the young woman feel as if she has no stability in the world in the sense is being subsumed into this, into this chaos or this, this. So again, this is the interaction between the mother's animus or undifferentiated masculine and the, the, the young girl's animus. It's very tricky to grasp a hold of. And I know this is just an introduction. And what I'm saying is that a major way that that's overcome is through relatedness to the animus, a conversation, a development, a process of, of saying, let me hear your song. Let me hear your ideas. Oh, this is my idea. This is my dance. This is my response. Oh, this is how I felt when that happened. This is the mood that constellated and he and the, the friend, you know, the friend or the the husband or the professor, what his, what his, <laughs> how, how much is he able to meet the woman in her immense mystery? Again, my color chart is expressing the immense mystery and potential of the feminine. And um, in my reading of Torah, this is what the, the, um, the, the great author of this, of this Torah, of this word is looking for a place where women where the great potential of feminine um, psychology and personality can come into full blossom, that in fact, her soul is full with, with immense vitality. And so what we're talking about here is, is, is the development of structures and ideas and, uh, that can hold the woman and bring her towards the soul's natural life. Again, a conscious moving away from this animus stuff uh, that comes from the, er, the, the, the maternal levels of the father and mother Imago and bringing the soul's life into, into consciousness a bit more. And one way that is done is what my uh, grandmother did is she went out to the East and actually had this heroic journey seeking out wisdom and ideas and aesthetic knowledge. And she gave me this, this horse that she got out East and she showed me Eastern mythology and this still life that I made represents that search that she had, which is a longing to blossom her soul. Now, again, the difficulty with the East that Jung points out is it, it and the Greek myths themselves, what I'm pointing out is they're quite dangerous because they don't have a center to them. They're actually schizophrenic. You move over here, you move over there. One structure contradicts another structure. And this can be very toxic and, and therefore regressive to the, the developing girl or young woman. So you have to be careful of this. And that's where we get this, this paradoxical image of the feminine, which I've painted here and has been, has been expressed to me that this, this can create numinous effects in the woman when she encounters this painting. It is the, at once the, the drawing back into the, the negative mother at, as also as indicating on the other side, this ultimate mana personality or spirit soul guide that, that can actually guide her into the heavenly heights of the, of the unconscious and of the, Soul, but how do you get to that place where rather than falling in, falling back into the darkness of the moon, the, the new moon fall, going towards the full moon, towards the light of her, her, uh, her lunar or, or feminine consciousness, her feminine ego, her lunar ego. So not identifying with the, the solar masculine, but retaining that lunar quality, that moon quality, but incorporating ideas and, 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 and allowing for the soul's life to flourish, right? So this is a longer lecture here because the feminine to me is much more, much more nuanced and I have no problem, you know, throwing shade and making fun of male psychology and joking about examples to poke fun at things to reveal consciousness when it comes to the male personality. But when it comes to the 
feminine, I, I appreciate and value so highly that potential that I want to be very careful. So we're talking still on this, on this level of breaking through the shadow to get to, away from the animus and towards the soul's life. Now, again, the ideas, if they're good and solid ideas in relatedness to, to other, they, they, will, they will come to, to, the, to the soul's life, which really represents dreams, fantasies, and interest in play. As I mentioned, the dance and as the conversation as an early form of play, and interest really being the soul's interest, not interest in the animus sense again, we're talking about a, the soul's interest here. The soul, as free-spirited, as, as connected to nature, as close to the earth and close to the body, to, to the plants and animals and trees, to the maternal in the positive sense is where the soul will initially be found. In the dreams that come in the darkness and depth of night, the, the meanings that are found intuitively and, and scribbled down in a journal. This is the playful, you know, wide-eyed soulfulness that is in each woman, old and young. And that, that is what will lead to this, this generative, generative potential of the soul. The balancing of the animus, represented as the horse, with this this beauty and play and so you can see that that I'm saying here there's there's self embrace and relatedness brought into the ego brought into the personality from this from this very very deep place of transformative energy meaning it's 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 dynamic and active and and alive and and really has a, an intensity of emotion to it. And on the other side, the, the, the negative aspects of the animus are translated into, into ideas of self-discovery that, that are cogent in one's life. And this, this is the type of, of process, the, the balancing process, some from over here and some from over here, that leads to, to an integration so in terms of the soul, the side of the personality here connected to the soul is I'm going to talk here about, we just saw Korah, the, 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 the innocent one, the playful one in nature connected to Persephone. This Persephone element, so to speak. What is that mystery that she calls forth that the terrible mother denies, but is fruitful for her, connected to the moon and to the earth and to the natural functions, the natural functions of her body and to the depths. This is the depths of the water, to the depths of her dreams and fantasies and desires, which, which are instinctual, but have purpose to them. So as the Persephone soul aspect gets developed, there is a sense of ability to actually understand the meaning or the why. That life isn't happening to them. The inner animist judge is, is, is forgotten a little bit, put aside. Okay, I hear that voice, but no, that's not relevant. What is the meaning here for me? What am I, what am I looking for and why becoming clear on that? And one pitfall of the Persephone is the aesthetic, that because she is the, the flowering into life, the budding in from, from, the, from the maiden into the woman, that there's this element to her that is beautiful. All, all women in their unique way are beautiful, and the fascination with her own beauty is correlated with a fascination with outer things and beautiful things. And that is all fine and good, but it can also be taken too far. And what the real beauty is, is the meaning of one's life, one's unique life, and one's purpose and direction. And that usually comes through when it comes to the soul here, is relatedness. 
that the embracing of oneself and the purpose of one's life is connected to actually being related to an outer an outer person um, or an outer uh, a place, a sense of place, a sense of um, a role to play, and that is the that's the real transition from from the maiden to the to the adult. Now, the soul's natural life can also be experienced through this pink and green here, the name of which is, is manifold and seen today quite readily. And here, the beauty fascinations are even more intense in the sense that the, the, the body, the, the appreciation of the body can become narcissistic and showing off the body and giving away the body too easily in these things. But really this pink and green area is calling for an appreciation and a valuing of the body and the uh, erotic or intimate capacity of the woman and, and for her creative capacity that intimacy and, and the erotic are actually metaphors for, are actually metaphors for the creativity that uh, dreams of, of sexual intercourse are metaphors for appreciating the, 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 the potency of that other individual, their creativity, their ideas, that the erotic side of the woman, of this pink and green quality of the personality is calling forth for, for a, an attention to, to this... <laughs> this metaphorical idea. And I know that's very difficult to grasp, but it's, it's moving from the possession of the archetype into a, into a related capacity. Because the archetypes are impersonal. The archetypes are impersonal. Which is harsh to hear that we are lived out by, by aspects of, of, of nature that are not, don't have our self-interest or even well-being at heart, that this, this exhibitionism is very detrimental to the personality. And I will point out Kim Kardashian because she's a major figure in that her pink and green exhibitionism has led to severe um, autoimmune disorder of the, of the rashes on the legs and her sisters have all had cheating or divorce in their lives. And this is the downside of, of identifying with the pink and green element, the goddess, the erotic goddess, that the exhibitionism and the modesty unfortunately has a flip side that, that, that this is what comes from it is unfortunately much pain and suffering. And Again, the redemptive meaning here is to find what is beautiful in a metaphorical sense, the beauty in, in relationship to other people and caring for other people and giving to other people, giving not your body to other people, but giving your heart. That's the pink. Giving your heart into the world, giving your emotion. That's the, that's the blue. Giving your, giving your soul in a positive sense. That is the pink and green taken from possession, if you look at Boland's works, the downside of the Aphrodite, to, to, to an integrated place. And even further than that, even further than that the, is the development of the, the development that comes from this is an authentic self. The authentic self leads to a, a higher maternal, a, a, a type of old and young at once, at once old and young and yet wise. And so the, the Persephone, the, this, this, this dark on, uh, woman that can lead down to the depths now begins to lead up to, to the heavenly heights. In, in the myths of Persephone, she can descend into the underworld and come up again. And same thing with the other goddess, this ability to descend and ascend. Practically speaking, this means having a sense of, of, one's, of one's 
life meaning and purpose and daily activities and functions, the functions of the body which are so demanding, as well as as a sense of, of higher values and purpose and life, as life as, as actually meaningful and therefore to be respected. And that respect and dignity is what generates is what generates this maternal this maternal that is old and young at once wise and playful she holds a drum and yet she's sensual but protected she is alive and awakened but not giving herself away too easily and this is what will constellate the connection to the true soulmate and whether or not you're married or in a relationship the, the connection to the soulmate always needs to be maintained and falling into the trap of identification with the primordial goddesses here uh, mentioned as example of Kim Kardashian will lead to the falling apart of relationships. And this is why, you know, you could you could amplify this and say Kanye West is on Twitter saying he wants a divorce from her, his wife. Why does divorce happen? Why does why does uh, struggles within relationship happen? It's because that connection to the soulmate's lost through dispersion of libido. The dispersion of libido occurs through l lacking in this sense of, of respect and dignity, self-respect and dignity, which I represent in this, this shamanes, this, this, this mystical woman who, who, is, who is wise and respected, respectful of herself. And we demand the respect that we receive. And this is what leads to the integration of the personality. And so in another follow-up lecture, I will, I will come more into the nuances of, of, of integrating these opposites, the transformative, the maternal, the, how the animus grows and, and, and integrates and, and the soul becomes even more integrated into a blossoming of the personality and the self. And I have this mandala that reaches into these extraordinary colors that represent the ultimate potentiality of the personality being integrated, expressed, felt, seen, heard, and, and developed. And so that will be for a follow-up lecture. In the meantime, I'd like to stick with this sort of introduction. And you can go to samuelabelo.com and read various articles looking back and through the reviews of various artists, especially the SEED exhibition going back to 2018. That's the, the S-E-E-D, SEED exhibition, Samuel Abelo, for example. You can see the overview of, of uh, women's psychology and utilizing Eric Neumann's Origins and History of Consciousness and especially Boland's Goddesses in Every Woman. So I hope you've enjoyed this, this introduction or overview to the female personality and um, I'm enjoying the work. I have a few uh, new works over here that I'm going to show you because you've made it to the end. This is the Mujeres Mystica, the women that I encountered in South America and who have extraordinary wisdom, extraordinary dignity and mystery, but also sensuality. They are um, close to the earth and yet very wise and stable. They are part of the lost tribes of the Jewish people, our lost brothers and sisters in South America. And so I'm signing off now. Thanks for listening.